Folks, you are going to love this video. Stick with it to the end. I mean, I've got some video inside the courtroom here in Minnesota, and I have to ask the question, just how bad is the case against President Donald Trump with this 14th Amendment nonsense in Minnesota when liberal Supreme Court justices in liberal Minnesota are raising serious doubts as to the legitimacy of this case. Welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic. I'm your host, Neil Johnson. Excited to have you with me today. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We have a lot of fun over here. Let's get right into the news. But before I do, actually, you guys are probably wondering, you're like, what? How do you get this really cool Lumberjack Logic stuff? Well, folks, you go to Lumberjack Logic show.square.site. Links are below. And if you use promo code Lumberjack right now, you can get 20% off. That's right, 20% off. I'm not kidding, 20% off. Anyways, the, there's an article in the Gateway Pundit today. Now the headline says, Minnesota Supreme Court Chief Justice dresses down leftist lawyer working to keep Trump off 2024 ballot. It wasn't a complete dressing down, but nonetheless, the Minnesota Supreme Court on Thursday held a hearing on whether Trump could be blocked from the 2024 ballot. Eight Minnesota voters, believe me people, they had no trouble finding these people. Quick trivia question for you. In 1984, Ronald Reagan won every state in the nation, except which state? That's right, Minnesota. So this is how liberal Minnesota is, okay? In fact, Washington, D.C. was the only other area, so there would be 51 jurisdictions, and that was one of the doubts raised by the judge, which we'll get into here in just a second. But eight Minnesota voters followed a lawsuit citing the 14th Amendment to keep Trump off the ballot. A leftist lawyer appeared before the Minnesota Supreme Court on Thursday to argue the state has the authority to block Trump from the 2024 ballot. The legal theories were based on Section 3 of the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment, which states public officials who have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the U.S. may be disqualified from public office. Trump has not been in charge with engaging in insurrection or rebelling against the United States. In fact, I want to just real quickly here. There are three requirements to be president of the United States. You just need to be a natural born citizen of the United States. You need to be at least 35 years old and have been a resident of the United States for at least 14 years. You're going to see Justice Hudson uh, basically question whether or not, even if they could do this, whether they should do this. Well, Mr. Trump is un ineligible to hold office because of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And therefore, this court should order the Secretary of State to, to keep his name off the ballot. What, what I'm concerned about, though, let's say you're right. Let's say we agree with you that Section 3 is self-executing and that we do have the authority under the, the relevant statute to, to keep Mr. Trump's name off the ballot. Should we is the question that that concerns me the most and I'm getting at some of the political question just disability issues uh, that respondents have raised uh, because it, it does seem to me that you run square into the problem that Chief Justice Chase talked about in Griffin where you have the potentiality of 50 different states um, who, depending on the, the nature of the statutes in those states, uh, deciding this question differently, deciding whether states have the right to determine uh, who's eligible for a national office. And, and that concerns me that you have this possibility for, as Justice Chase said, for just chaos. So should we do it, even if we could do it and we can do it? Then the attorney goes into some legal blatherings about why the court needs to do this. But the judge raised interesting questions. And what's really funny is how this leftist judge is now going to fall in love with the Electoral College. Check this out. For better or worse, we have an electoral college, not a single national election. We have 51 different elections. As a practical matter, Your Honor, if this court uh, were to uh, rule that Trump is disqualified from the primary ballot, I anticipate that he would seek review in the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, we know this leftist attorney would probably love nothing more than to see the Electoral College abolished so that flyover states wouldn't have as big of impact in the decision of a national election. Interestingly, he's talking about states pulling people out of federal elections. States do have the ability to run their elections, but not just jerk federal, uh, federal candidates off the ballot, especially when he hasn't even been charged with the whole 
insurrection deal. This is this is a frivolous case, people. I want you to understand this isn't going anywhere. Even if uh, some lift, leftist liberal judges in Minnesota decided to rule the way he wanted them to on this, he's right. It is going to go to the Supreme Court. So I'm saving you from having to listen to all the blather from this attorney. And I'm bringing you right back to the judge because what he did was he tried to cite all this case law and, hey, look, you know, this really is, this has never happened before. Come on, let's just be honest, okay? Never has this happened before. And now watch the judge come back and say, look, there's cases on the other side of this too. This is not a solid argument you're laying out. It's but you would agree there there's some cases on the other side of that as well. Um, Castro comes to mind and a couple of others. So at... At best, there's mixed authority out there, and I, and I guess my question then is, doesn't that suggest we use caution and some judicial restraint and, and, and maintain the status quo, if you will? Again, I'm saving you the blather from the attorney, but I am going to leave a little at the end of this next clip because you just need to see him squirm a little because things just aren't going his way, and then he tries to bring up Obama's birth certificate. I kid you not, watch this. Professor Mueller suggests, it's interesting that you mentioned his brief, uh, his amicus brief, because he suggests in that brief that he was not aware of any case in which a factual dispute over uh, a presidential candidate eligibility has resulted in a candidate being disqualified. Do you agree with that? I mean, he acknowledges that it's a negative and so it may be hard to prove, but do you agree with that, that there really isn't any other similar set of uh, facts? Uh, we're certainly not aware of a set of facts under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment with a, a factual dispute. Uh, of course, this court uh, is fully equipped to decide factual disputes, um, not, uh, not necessarily in its appellate form, but, but through you know, referral uh, to a referee under Section 204B44. That happens often. I'm struck by the fact that many of the cases that deal with eligibility issues deal with um, non-factual disputes, age, citizenship, things of that sort. And I'm just wondering if that affects the outcome here at all. Oh, well, Your Honor, if, if I may uh, respond briefly uh, to the issue of citizenship, uh, many of the uh, challenges to uh, Barack Obama's uh, candidacy uh, alleged uh, factual questions about uh, where he'd been uh, born, whether he was actually born in the United States. Yes, yeah, so you can tell his political leanings regarding the birth certificate issue there with President Obama. But the bottom line here is, folks, just as I mentioned before, Ultimately, this would go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Trump would appeal, even if these justices didn't rule in his favor. And it appears from this they're really going to act with judicial restraint, although we have been fooled before, I understand. But there was an interesting case that just dropped out of Connecticut. I will link that video at the end here. You have got to check that out because it really calls into question some of the mail-in procedures, and that may be helping with the elimination of some of those issues in the next election. So thanks so much for listening to another edition of Lumberjack Logic. Remember to check out the merch store where you can save 20% with promo code Lumberjack or you can check out mypillow.com, promo code Lumberjack for big savings there. I love y'all. Peace out.